get started. Uh, first of all, my first recommendation would be that you go out and buy these. Hello, hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited for today's video because we are going to do the books and makeup tag. Um, so that's essentially what my channel and Instagram is now become is books and makeup. So I figured this would be the perfect tag to do. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure who exactly started it, but I will find out and I will link them below or put their name on the screen somewhere. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, if you are unfamiliar with exactly what this is, uh, what does this mean? Uh, essentially, I'm gonna go do my makeup and I'm gonna go through every step and each step of my makeup has like a question or like a pick a book scenario that fits the question. Um, so I'm gonna start with my primer. Um, and the question for primer is, <laughs> I'm recording on my phone, so I had to write all of my uh, questions and answers in this notebook, which I love. Okay, so primer is pick a book that has left a lasting impression on you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get my primer out and start doing that, and I'm gonna talk about this book while I do my primer. Okay, so the two primers that I'm gonna be using today, also my hair is pink. I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't think it's been pink on my channel yet, but it's like a purplish pink. Um, it's faded a little bit now, but I really like it. Um, I probably will do it again. Um, I'm into fun colors now, so. All right, so I'm gonna use two primers today. Um, the first one I'm gonna use is the Wet n Wild Water Drop Primer, and it's the Cucumber Scent. This is what it looks like. It feels super refreshing, I really enjoy that. And then I'm also gonna use a little bit of the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, um, which works really well for filling in your pores and just making your skin look more seamless. I don't know how I feel about the exact angle of this background. I feel like I couldn't get it exactly right, but I really wanted to be in front of my bookshelves. But I hate that you can't see the like, top, but it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna put the hydrating primer on first. I have dry skin. I really like to go in first with a hydrating primer. Um, just because my skin really needs it, needs that hydration. Um, okay, so a book that left a lasting impression on me is Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech, which I'll put up here because I don't actually own a copy of it. Um, this book actually was published in 1994. Um, if you're new here, I was born in 97, I'm 23, so it was a little bit before my time. However, in school, we actually were required, not required, well, yeah, we were required to read it for a class um, when I was pretty young, actually. I think I was in fourth grade, I believe, fourth or fifth grade. And I don't know why exactly, but this book left like a really lasting impression on me. This was around the time when, I mean, I've always been a reader and I've always loved to read, but this was my first, like, it's a young adult book. Um, so it's the first like chapter book that like really stuck with me. Um, and I, I can't really pinpoint exactly why besides it's a great book. Um, it's about this girl named Sal who goes on a road trip with her grandparents um, from Ohio to Idaho, I believe that's right. And they stop at a bunch of like um, national parks and stuff like that. And Sal, I'm not gonna spoil anything because I really think everyone should read it. Where'd the lid go to this? <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely think everyone should read it so I don't wanna spoil it, but essentially in the very beginning, you get the information that Sal's mother has died, unfortunately. Um, and because of that, um, she goes to live with her grandparents and they're very like eccentric and very uh, just odd in, a, in the best way. Um, um, so yeah, she, it's about, you know, there there's a few different timelines going on at once. There's um, the current road trip that they're on um, and then it, she's telling the story of her friend, Phoebe, um, and, like, she became friends with her and, like, how that friendship blossomed and, like, she has a lot of weird stuff going on in her life um, that she, conf like, confided in to Sal. Um, and then at the same time that, her like, her story is unfolding, um, you get Sal's story as well um, about how her struggles and losing her mom and all that. So it's just a really good, like... I don't know a good way to describe it, but like a coming of age novel, maybe? I don't know, it's really good. So I highly recommend it. And it really stuck with me um, as one of the most influential books when I was younger growing up. Okay, so next we have foundation. What is the question? 
<laughs> oh, okay. Favorite first book in a series. Um, this is hard because I don't read a whole lot of series. Um, honestly, my favorite first book in a series is probably Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, I'm not going to get into everything going on with JK Rowling. I don't agree with some of the things she said. I love these covers, by the way. Sorry. Side note. Um, but I, the Harry Potter books were really important to me growing up and I'm not going to let them not be important to me anymore because of some unfortunate things that have been said by the author. Um, but all that being said, I think that this is my favorite book from the series and I think that it is a great first book in the series. It's just so classic and such a good book um, that it will always be my uh, favorite in the series. So, okay, And for the foundation that I'm using, I am using the um, Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. This is what it looks like. Um, I highly recommend this if you have dry skin, like I said I do. Um, it's a super glowy as you will see. I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer of that on. But yeah, I just really love the Harry Potter series, honestly. And I would like to know if you're watching this and you enjoy Harry Potter, what your favorite book in the series is. Cause I feel like that's a hot topic, you know? I feel like everyone has different opinions. Um, I also would say that my favorite movie is not my favorite book. I think the movies are way different than the books for the most part. Um, and I definitely think you should read the books as well as watch the movies. Okay, so I finished up with my foundation. Um, it, this foundation has like medium coverage and see, you can see how glowy it is. I love that. Um, but yeah, so I recommend this foundation hands down. I think it's really good. Um, and again, it has like light to medium coverage depending on how much you put on. But what I like is you can always add more with concealer, which is what I usually prefer to do. So next up we have eyebrows, which I don't really do much for my brows, as you will see. Um, but the question was, um, what is a book that you think everyone should read? Um, I have two suggestions. The first one is the whole like entire Chronicles of Narnia series by C.S. Lewis. I feel like everyone should read. I think they're super, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Lyr super lyrical and super fun. Um, very adventurous and have like so much depth and meaning to them. I think my favorite is probably The Magician's Nephew or and The Horse and His Boy, but I also really love The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is the one that's uh, most familiar to people. But yeah, I definitely think everybody should read those. Um, even though I think they're technically geared towards like young adults slash kids, I think that anyone can benefit from reading them. They're so fun. Um, so those. Um... And then The Help by Katherine Stockett, I think that everyone should read. Um, it it really, I'm gonna do my eyebrows while I talk. Um, I am really glad that I read it because I think it educated me a lot on, obviously I am not black, so I can't experience what people within the black community experience. Um, and I don't know all of the history behind it. And I think that this helped me learn a lot um, and I think that the book is very powerful and it's very important. Um, and I think that it's just written beautifully as well. I think that I actually haven't seen the movie. Um, I know a lot of people, it's also funny, um, as well as like deep and, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but influential, I guess. Um, it's also funny and like a good read. Um, I actually listened to the audiobook on Libby. So I don't have the physical copy. Oh, also, um, I'm using the Maybelline Tattoo Studio uh, Brow Pencil, I guess. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. It's a brow tint pen, okay, in the shade medium brown. I just like comb through my brows really quickly. I have like big brows, so I don't usually put too much in them. Um, and then I'm gonna go over it with the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel, which is a clear brow gel. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that that's a good read. Um, I definitely want to read more pertaining to race. I think that I would love to be more educated and as educated as I can to help, um, you know, be more aware of the communities and be an advocate and a supporter of, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and just people of color in general. I think that's really important to be an activist as much as you can. Why not learn through books? And other things you shouldn't just learn through books, but books is a good way to start.
educating yourself. Okay, that's usually not the order I do my makeup, but we're here, so. Okay, so next we have concealer and the question is pick some characters that you wish didn't exist. I feel like this is very harsh, okay? So it took me a while to think of an answer for this because I think that even like bad characters have a place in most books, um, like characters that aren't necessarily likable or that are antagonists or anything like that. Like I think they have a role in, in all the books that I've read that I've experienced characters I don't necessarily like. Like I don't wish they weren't in the book. So I think the, the one that I want to go with is, um, I haven't heard a whole lot about these books. I'm gonna pull one down. Actually, they're really high up, so I'm just gonna put a picture on here. <laughs> Um, the Merciless books. Um, I believe there's four or five, um, but there's a character that's really annoying in there. Her name is Riley. Um, so I guess if I had to pick, it would be her. I feel like she doesn't really add a whole lot to the series. I know she's actually a pretty important character, but to me, she's just really annoying. And so I wish that she didn't, I don't want to say that I wish she didn't exist because I think she does have a place. But if I had to pick, it would be her. And for my concealer, I really need to like, when I'm talking about this, be doing my makeup because I feel like that's the whole point. Um, but the concealer that I'm using is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer in the shade Fair... Fair 15 W, I think. This is what it looks like. I love this concealer. It has a really nice little doe foot applicator that works really well and it has a really good coverage. Like I just use the smallest amount and it goes a really long way. See? Okay, for my next step, we're gonna be doing powder. And so this one, I'm going to be sure I'm gonna show you the makeup I'm using and then uh, we're gonna move on to the book related question. Um, so I'm gonna be using, from underneath my eyes, I'm gonna be using the Hourglass uh, Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is really expensive, but it is so good. And it has lasted me a long time, like probably way more than I was supposed to keep it, but we're just gonna ignore that. Um, and then I have the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder, which I'm gonna use all over my face. I love this powder, it's super cheap. The stark comparison of price differences in this is hilarious actually. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be using all over my face while I answer this question. Um, and the question is, what is your favorite last book in a series? Um, and this one took me a while, honestly, to think about. Like I said before, I don't read a whole lot of series. Um, I'm more of a standalone book person, but the series that I do read, I'm pretty diehard about. Um, I... <laughs> I'm a huge Twilight fan. I always have been. Obviously, I don't think that it resonates as much with me anymore just because it was, but it was a really big deal to me in my young adult life. Um, and I still love it. Like, I'm not going to lie and sit here and tell you that I don't enjoy it anymore because I do. Um, it's just different, you know, like when Midnight Sun came out um, a couple months ago, I was so excited. Midnight Sun is really good. Technically though, that's not the last book in the series. The technical last book in the series is Breaking Dawn. And I would have to say that it's the best book and series like it's it's my favorite I really love I'm not there's no way that like if you're listening that you don't know how it ends so like if for some reason you want to save the ending of Twilight like you haven't already seen it then don't watch this I guess but um I love seeing Bella as a vampire I love everything about that book um I love the fight scenes I love how they get all of the vampires together from the different cultures um, I think it's really cool. And my other answer to this question, because I, I have two, is Allegiant by Veronica Roth. Um, oh, wait, I want to show you this. Um, for Breaking Dawn, I have, I bought the white collector's edition of these books. They're so pretty. Like, look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, me over here saying, yeah, like, it's not, you know, as influential in my life anymore. Buys the whole white collector set of the Twilight books. Come on, but I love this book. I really do. Um, I just wanted to show you how pretty it was. Okay, moving on. So um, Allegiant is the last book in the um, Divergent series. And I think it's the best out of the series. Um, people will argue that it, it doesn't end well. Like the, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil this one 
mainly because I don't remember exactly what all happens. Long time since I've read those, but I really enjoyed all of those growing up. Um, but that's my favorite out of the series just because it's super emotional and like wraps up i feel like it does wrap up the series pretty well even though there are some things that are upsetting <laughs> okay we are moving on to eyeshadow and this part's gonna probably take me the longest so i'm probably gonna speed through this i'm not gonna do a super complicated eye look just because i don't want to be here for ages um but i think i'm gonna do like a pink look to match my hair like a subtle pink look maybe i say that but watch it turn out like not subtle at all um but this one is um, a book that has your favorite colors on the cover. This is one of my favorite covers in general that I own. Um, this is Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs. And I, this green and gold combo is like my favorite color combo. Um, and I just think it's beautiful. And so I choose this one. I actually haven't read this yet, but I've read the um, Peculiar Children series up until I'm in the middle of Map of Days. I think that's a really good series if you're enjoy fantasy and young adult. As far as what eyeshadow palette I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using a mix of two actually. Um, I'm going to be using the Morphe and Jeffree Star palette um, and this is what it looks like. It's beautiful. Oh, It's really pretty. I love all the colors. I'm going to be mainly using just the pinks and maybe more of the neutral colors in that one. And then I'm going to be using the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. I just think Morphe does really good eyeshadow. Um, that's all that I have owned from them and then this one is just it just has so many options you know so it's just a really good go-to um, but that's what I'm going to be using and I'm probably going to speed through some of this just to hurry it along. I'm going to go in with this brown color first perfectionist okay so I went ahead and finished my eyeshadow off camera just because in the sake of time just wanted to go ahead and get it done um but yeah I just use a mixture of those two palettes um and since this isn't a tutorial I didn't feel like I had to show the whole thing but I definitely will do more tutorials more tutorials soon um I will definitely get back to that because I do enjoy making them All right and next we have eyeliner um, I'm not going to use any liquid eyeliner on my lid, I'm going to use um, a pencil liner in my waterline. This is NYX uh, Cottage Cheese Ew, Jumbo Eye Pencil that I'm going to use on, in my waterline. Um, and the question is, pick a dark and mysterious book, which is funny because I'm actually using white. Um, but... I actually have two. Um, I'm going to pick the Supernatural Enhancements by Edgar Cantero. Um, this is actually a book that I feel like does not get near enough hype. I never see anyone talk about it, but it is one of my favorite horror books. Um, or I guess technically it's not horror, like it's mystery because um, it is scary, but it's more of like mysterious. Um, it definitely is dark. It has like a gothic vibe, but essentially the plot is there is this guy who is notified that his like either distant uncle or cousin has passed away and left him a house that he has never been to before. And um, trigger warning to do with suicide, sort of, as you'll like read more into the book, N no spoilers, but um, there's been a series of people that have committed suicide in the house. And there's this weird like historical like society. I think this is placed in a, different era of time. I don't remember exactly what era. It's been a while since I've read it, um, but it's really interesting. It goes into details about like there's a lot of like paranormal stuff happening in the house that they're trying to figure out. He actually is dating this girl who is, um, I believe she's Irish. I think she's from Ireland um, and she is mute. So she communicates in different ways. Um, and the writing style is not done in um your typical book format it's actually done through like a series of letters and like tape recordings and like audio recordings and like video footage um which i really like those types of books that do that i like the different um forms of communication so i highly recommend it if you're into like mystery thriller like those type of books it's very good um, and I don't hear a lot of people talk about it, so that's definitely one I wanted to mention in this video. One that is a lot more common um, that you probably know if you're into horror novels. Oops. 
And one of my favorite uh, books that I've read this year is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Um, do I have that close? No, I do not. Um, is yeah. So that's a really good book that I have read this year. It is super dark and creepy. Um, it actually really scared me, and it takes a lot to scare me with books, but it left me like feeling creepy crawly. And um, I'm not gonna explain the whole plot because I feel like it is again. It's one of the more common ones, but essentially. There's like a, a pet cemetery and behind the pet cemetery in their um, essentially backyard of their house that they move into is an Indian burial ground um, that if you bury something there, it comes back to life. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's so spooky and like I love the vibes that it gives off. Um, I'm new to Stephen King's, but I've read a lot of his stuff this year and so far it's my favorite out of what I've read. And the movie's really good too. Okay, next up we have mascara. As you can see, I already curled my eyelashes just a minute ago. Um, and this question is pick a long book. Um, honestly, I think my longest book is probably Deathly Hollows, which you can see right here. It's pretty big. And also Breaking Dawn that I showed you earlier is very large. Um, so yeah, I guess I'd pick both of those. It's funny because those are both part of a series, which I don't really read that much of. But I think these are the two biggest books that I have. And also, uh, Map of Days by Rance Riggs and the Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children uh, books is pretty big, but those are like the biggest ones I have. That's what she said. And as for the mascara that I am using, it is the Essence Volume Stylist Mascara. That's what it looks like. And this part's not really interesting, so I'm just gonna do my mascara off camera and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I went ahead and did my bronzer off camera because that wasn't actually one of the questions or one of the books to pick on this tag. So I skipped it, but just so you know, I used this palette, the Cheek Stars palette by Benefit. Um, it's just a bunch of blushes and it has the Hula bronzer in there. So I used the Hula bronzer today um, and I really like it. So next we're gonna do blush. And blush. blush is pick a book with a cringeworthy romance. Ooh. Okay, so I'm just gonna use two series. Um, okay, so you guys heard me talk about the Twilight series. Um, you know how much I love that series, like I've already said, but that romance is cringeworthy. Actually, I love, I'm team Edward all the way till the day I die. So I would say that the romance with Bella and, um, Jacob is cringeworthy because I don't like it. Also, um, I really enjoyed, I'm gonna do my blush while I talk, like I'm supposed to. Um, I'm using the Sugar Bomb blush, which is the middle one right there. Got to where I really love blush lately. I normally use it to not use that much, but now I use a lot. Um, anyway, so I also really enjoyed the Young Adult series, the, the House of Night books, which I know were pretty popular back in the day. And that romance is pretty cringeworthy with Zoe and um, no spoiler really because uh, this the, that series is really old, but like she has a romance with multiple people. So that's kind of cringeworthy. I got a lot of secondhand embarrassment from like that, <laughs> that whole series, which I do love it, but like her, she doesn't have a super good track record with relationships. So it's just funny. And like, it is cringe to watch and read because of some stuff that happens between that whole love triangle. Um, so yeah, I think I would say those two, probably more than the Twilight one. Alrighty, and we are wrapping it up with highlighter, right? Yeah, technically. Um, okay, so highlighter is pick a book that brightens your day. That's really sweet. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I like a lot of scary dark books. Um, oh, I have the correct answer. Beauty and the Beast brightens my day always. I love this book. If you know me, you know I'm obsessed with Beauty and the Beast. I'm obsessed with Belle. Um, I'm obsessed with Disney in general. So any Disney book really brightens my day. Um, but Hunter got me this one and it's like an illustrated edition um, with like pictures and interactive elements in it. And so it's super cool. So every time I look at this book, it brightens my day just because it's so sweet and thoughtful and I really love it. So this one always brightens my day. And for highlighter, I'm gonna use the highlighter in that palette that I was showing you guys, and it's called Cookie. Oops, I just dug a big hole in it, my bad. But um, 
If you guys are watching and you enjoy Disney, I would love to hear your favorite Disney books. Because I always am on the hunt for more like, I really like the Twisted Tale series. Or like, yeah, I guess series like those kind of books. Um, I've read a couple of them. I haven't read all of them. But I really enjoy those. Um, recently I tried the Kingdom Keeper novels, which are good. Um, they are a little bit younger focus, which is Disney, so like I get it. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else that I really like that's Disney related book wise. I don't really know, but I really would like suggestions. Um, okay, and actually lastly, we have lips, which I'm not gonna do today. I'm gonna replace that with setting spray, which is not on this list that I'm going to be using. All right, your favorite book, Kiss. Very fitting, I love that. Um, uh, I think I'm gonna have to go with, I'm not gonna say with who because I don't wanna spoil it, but it definitely is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Um, I recently read this book and then the second one, there's multiple books, I'm not finished, so don't spoil it for me. Um, but. I've read this one and then Glass Sword. I think the next one's King's Cage that I have not read, but I really want to. And I love the romance in this book. It's very good, it's very twisty, and it's just, I highly recommend this book. And I'm gonna spray my face with the Mario Badescu facial spray with aloe, chamomile, and lavender. Love the way this smells, it's amazing. All right guys, well thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, my first like combination of a bookish video and a makeup related video. I really like how this look turned out. Um, it matches the vibe that I'm going for right now. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you're new, my name is Kayla. Hope you enjoyed being here. Make sure you follow me over on Instagram where I'm a lot more active. I'm trying to be more active on YouTube. Um, so I hope to have more fun videos in the future. I have a gaming podcast um, and I will put my Instagram up here and I will link the podcast below like I always do. I would love if you would go over and support me on there and listen. Um, I co-host with my friend Jerrica and we talk about a lot of different fun stuff that's game related. We talk about, you know, pop culture and news and stuff like that. So I'd really appreciate if you'd follow me over on there and I will see you guys next time. Bye.